Hello, everyone. Hey. It's Susan and Alan here with our Sunday School lesson. Uh, we talked last week about how people can be present for one another and support each other. And um, Alan had a hard time thinking of who Iron Man's buddy was. That was close. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> anyway, this week uh, we are talking a little bit about how, uh, again, how people can support each other in our family and in our communities, but also how our world of nature and animals and our pets can be our friends. And so I'm going to quiz Alan here uh -oh. on, on who is always there. But this time we're talking about animals rather than like their yeah. best friend or companion. Okay, Alan, who is always there for Dora the Explorer? Uh, I actually know this one. Boots. Boots the monkey. Mm -hmm. Very nice. What about Harry Potter? Oh boy, is it the big spider when he goes into the woods? <laughs> or maybe... Hey, and you guys can guess. You guys can, can guess while we're saying this. Can you guys help me on this one? <laughs> I wish they could hear you. I Come wish on, you yell could hear out. them. Yell it out. Then yell it out on your screen. Okay, give me that one. Okay, it's Hedwig. Oh, his, his owl. owl. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. What about Ariel? In The Little Mermaid, the princess. Oh, yeah. There's, it's, it's the fish. The fish. Flounder. Yeah, flounder. Flounder. Her buddy Flounder. And you're old enough. You'll get this one. Yeah. What about Shaggy? Ah, uh, Scooby-Doo. Scooby, Scooby-Doo. That's, That's right. One. And Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Okay, Toto. Toto. Yep. Dorothy would not be complete without Toto. So, oh, and Anna told me one. Oh, it was Dora and Boots. So yeah. you may have a lot more that you're thinking of, and um, yeah. So what are some that you guys? There's probably some different ones that are kind of characters that have anim animal friends that are with them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are animals that are outside, and sometimes it's their pets. Mm -hmm. um, and we have Alan and I have a cat and a dog that we love very much. And you guys might have a family pet at home. That's right. So. Um, we're talking about how God is always with us in addition to our human and animal companions. And let's start our morning here with a prayer. Dear God, thank you for being an encouraging wind at our backs, giving us open minds and soft hearts to follow where you lead. Help us be present in each moment that we might embrace compassion and love each other and help each other on our journey. Okay. Amen. Um, the story we talked about last week, and I'll just give you a brief little recap of it, was from the book of, it's from, it's the story of Ruth and Naomi. And um, do you want to give it? try for the summary. Oh, you, you do that. I'll you summarize that. it. Okay. So I'll read a little bit of it. So I just get the facts straight here. So in Judah, there was a man who was worried about how his family would survive a famine, which is like a lack of food. So he took his wife, Naomi, and their two sons to the country of Moab. And in the country of Moab, the sons married two women called Orpah and Ruth. So then Naomi's husband and her two sons died. And so it was Naomi and Ruth and Orpah all alone in this foreign land because they journeyed there to escape the famine so they could try to find food. So Naomi told her daughters-in-law, she said, why don't you go to your own families and I'm going to go head back to Judah. And her daughters-in-law both said, no, no, we want to stay with you. She said, no, you should go back to your families. You can marry again and have a family of your, of your own. So Orpah said, yep, you're right. I'm going to go back. But Ruth said, and I'll read this because I think it's really nice. Ruth said, where you go, I will go. Where you make your home, I will make my home. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. And where you die and are buried, I will be buried there too. I will be your family. 
And so Naomi saw that she couldn't change Ruth's mind, so they traveled back to Judah together. And then I, we talked about how the, the end of the story, um, Ruth actually goes to a field and, and gleans grain, which means she like picks it up, leftover grain off the ground. And the owner of the field saw her and fell in love with her, and they got married, and they had a, a son who was an ancestor to Jesus. So We really learned Ruth was one you wanted on your side. If I you recall. did. You wanted Ruth to have your back. Definitely. So it's important for us to look for those, those times when we can support each other. That was a good one. Yeah, it is. So you all can um, practice being present for each other, being like there for each other by listening to one another. And, um, and as we were talking about our pets, sometimes a pet is a really good listener too. And sometimes they do other things. They wag their tails and get excited to see us. They sit in our laps. Um, lots of things. And we have a couple of stories Alan's going to share mm. about some really fascinating uh, one's about a wild animal, and one's about a pet. Yeah. And I will say that our dog is easily the best listener in the house and is always the most happy to see me when I come home. So uh, he kind of is the top of the charts on my on my book. So here's a couple stories, and these are pretty interesting. These are examples of, you know, our, our animals that are there for us. So one is about a pig. And so when – Hmm? It's a potbelly pig. Potbelly pig, like a, a pet pig. So sometimes you can have these potbelly pigs that are not like pigs outside. They're, they can be pets. And when Mary Jo Altzman suffered a heart attack in 1998, it was her pet pig, Lulu, who ultimately came to her rescue and even saved her life. As recounted by the old Post-Gazette, Lulu, seeing her owner was in distress, went out to the road, laid down in the middle of the road as if it was playing dead, and waited. Finally, the man found her laying on the road, took her back to the house, and it saw that the owner was had a heart attack and was in distress and called the police, saving her life. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I read this story and made a little summary of it, but the pig went out in the middle of the road and played dead so yeah. the cars would stop. Yeah, and that's not really something amazing. a pig would do if it wasn't trying to kind of do something. It's something amazing. Different. So here's another one about a, a, a dolphin or dolphins. So there was a surfer, Todd Andrus, and he was had been attacked by a shark, and he was out uh, when he was out surfing, and it really hurt one of his legs. So he began to feel pretty hopeless because he didn't know what he could do. Well, then a whole pod, which is like a whole family of, of bottlenose dolphins, came to his rescue. They formed a protective pod around him, which allowed him to, you know to keep the shark away and everything else. And he could swim to safety where then someone on the, on the shore, a friend of his was able to give him first aid and get him to the hospital. And without those dolphins protecting him, he might not have been able to make it to shore. He could have been hurt worse and maybe wouldn't have survived it. So there are some dolphins just out of nature saved him. So sometimes when we, there's, these are kind of pretty dramatic stories where these animals did a lot to, to then very specifically save people that were in trouble. But animals all around us, like I just mentioned my dog. Well, there's no doubt that dog makes me feel a little better. Whatever happened in the day, I spend some time with him, I feel better. And that's probably true if you have any pets. But also, we talked about this before, that if you get out to nature, that even doctors will prescribe that to get out to make you feel better and everything else. Well, if you go outside and you see the squirrels who are a blast, and especially these baby squirrels that are jumping around and chasing each other, you'll see the rabbits, you'll see the birds, you'll see all sorts of things, you'll feel better. And so they will literally show that, well, your heart rate will come, calm down, and you'll feel better and all those things, and, and they're good for you. So they're, again, a gift for us, even if they're not saving our life directly. They sure are. And something you can do today uh, with your family, you can go outside and um, take a walk. See how many different kinds of animals you've noticed. And you can draw a picture, make a list and draw a little picture 
of each animal you see or write the names down and, and count how many different kinds you see. And don't forget insects, too. They're, they're a lot of fun to watch also. Oh, yeah. We've seen some. And we've seen maybe it's because we're home more. We've seen more different kinds of birds than we've ever seen and some coolest mm -hmm. insects. And there's some special ones each year. You get a different one. Uh, there's the, uh, I think it's called the wheel bug you'll see. And yeah, you there have been some of those. So, so try that today. Go out and do a nature walk and, and write down all the different things that you see, all the different animals and insects. So let's have a prayer, and we'll visit with you next week. Dear God, thank you so much for our amazing world. As we enjoy it and are so lucky to have it, help us remember to take care of it, to be thankful for nature, be thankful for animals, and help us to be kind to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See y'all. Hi, I'm Addie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a craft that will remind us to be kind to the environment and animals. We are going to make butterfly rings, such as this one on my finger. The materials you will need to make this craft is paper, which can be colored or white, coloring materials, such as colored pencils and crayons, pipe cleaners, and scissors. And you may hear some random noises in the background, and that's just because my neighbors are currently doing construction on their house. The first thing we are going to do is fold our paper in half, hamburger style. Then going to want to cut down the crease we just created because we only need half of a sheet of paper for our craft today. If you are doing this with a sibling, you guys could share your piece of paper. going to set the side the piece of paper I'm not using to the side and now we're going to fold it in half again the same way now we are going to draw the butterfly's wings and then cut them out and you're only going to draw half of the butterfly wings I have an example here because we are going, you're going to want to draw it on the crease. That way when we cut it out, we'll have both sets and that makes it really easy and makes it so that you don't have to cut as much. And you're also going to want to draw two parallel lines about the width of your finger or even less. And the reason we're going to do this is so that we have some paper in the middle to wrap around the pipe cleaners or wrap the pipe cleaners around so that we can make our ring. And I'm sorry, it's so dark. The lighting is weird and my colors won't show up if my lights aren't off. Um, so you can really make these wings any shape you want. And you could really make them as big or small as you want to. But the smaller you make them, that's going to make it a lot harder to actually cut them out. So I'm just gonna, this is how I would draw my butterfly wings. And you may want to have an adult cut out the wings for you. It can be kind of difficult. It's also easier to wrap the pipe cleaners around if the middle part is thicker. You can even kind of change the shape of the wings as you're cutting. There we go. So I'm going to use the other side of my butterfly wings and now we are ready to decorate them. So you can either decorate your butterfly's wings kind of like how I did before with different colors and spots or you could decorate them with an example of one way that you like to be kind to nature and animals. Another way to do this is you could write down, you can decorate it 
your wings however you want and then have an adult right on the back your example of how you would like to be kind to nature or you can just draw a picture that represents it on your wings and the way that I'm going to the example that I'm going to write is picking up trash and not littering so I'll pick up any trash I see and I won't litter and you could use my example or any other ones that you like and you want to do. You could even write multiple if you'd like. So now I'm going to decorate my wings. These wings are kind of hard to draw your example just because they're so small, which is why it might be easier to write them, but if you still want to decorate it with your example, that's perfectly fine. Other examples you could use could be maybe like going on a walk with your dog or playing with them. You could leave bird seed out for birds. You could plant a tree. There's lots of different things that we can do to be kind to nature. Um, okay. Now this part can be pretty difficult, so you'll probably want to ask an adult to help you. But first we're going to wrap the pipe cleaner around our finger once. And you want to place your finger in the middle to do this. You're just going to wrap it around your finger. And then I like to take this off of my finger to do this next part. But you want to keep it so that the loop is going this direction, not this way. But this way, just like how it was on your finger and then place the butterfly on top so that when it is on your finger, each the set of wings will be on either side of your finger. So now we are going to take the right side of the pipe cleaner and you're going to just want to wrap it around that middle part of the butterfly. So I like to go up and over first and then around you don't want to go too tight or the paper might rip. And then we have our first antenna. Then, sometimes you have to kind of situate it so that it's still on top of the ring. Now we're going to take our other side of the paper or the pipe cleaner and do the same thing. And you might want to kind of put it on your finger to reshape it just to make sure that it'll still fit on your finger and then we're gonna take it from the front go down and around the other half of the butterfly so this way when it's all done you're gonna have one pipe cleaner that's kind of on top of the butterfly which is that first one we did, and then the other pipe cleaner will come from the bottom and make the other antennae. There we go, now we have our butterfly ring. And your butterfly might not be perfectly straight on your finger, that's totally cool. And you could even make it to the side if you'd rather do that. 
and it might be even I find that that is easier now I'm going to write my example of how I'm going to be kind to nature and animals on the back of my butterfly wing awesome and now our butterflies are done Thanks so much for doing another craft with me. I hope you have an awesome week and that you enjoy your butterfly rings. Bye!